everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rising Tide Leadership Podcast. Whether you are watching us on YouTube or listening to this podcast, we are so glad you're here and we encourage you to download the show notes and follow along. We have a great show for you today. My name is Amber Jordan and I am here with Dr. Michael David Morales, aka Mo. How's it going today, Mo? Hey, what's going on, Amber? Uh, it's going really well. Uh, ready to talk about leadership. Let's do it. Well, you have titled today's episode, Leaders Have an All-In Outlook. And the first thing I thought of when you said that was the violinist from the Titanic. You remember that? I know you remember this scene where they're on the ship and the ship is like going down, right? And there's there's the violinist and some other musicians and they're there on the deck and like people are running around. They're trying to get the lifeboats and you know, there's not enough lifeboats and they're just like playing their song. And then they finish playing and they say goodbye to each other and just there's chaos all around them. And then this one violinist, which is actually based on a true story of Wallace Hartley from the Titanic, he, he turns around and begins to play again in the middle of the chaos. And one by one, the other musicians turn around and they come back and they join him and they play. I mean, talk about an all in outlook. I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. And to be honest with you, I think I'm a committed person, but my piano playing would not bring anyone peace <laughs> if the ship was going down. Because <laughs> practice was not my favorite thing. But, you know, when you and I first started the leadership journey, you asked for a commitment. You asked for me to commit to the process. And, you know, I, I remember sitting across the table from you and, and you were like, we're, you know, I I'm willing to go on this journey with you, but I need you to commit to meeting every week. I'm like, every week? Like, are you insane? Like, what, what are we gonna talk about every week for an hour? And little did I know that we would end up never having enough time to talk about all the things of leadership and all the things that I could learn and grow in in this journey. And we talked about commitment and I didn't realize what it took as a leader to really be all in and to really be committed and to really be committed to serving those that I led. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And so Mo, I know that you have three actions that leaders can take to increase their commitment, even just a little bit. So why don't you tell us what's the first action that leaders need to take to be all in? Yeah, you got it. Well, I totally love that scene of the Titanic, usually just watching it because everything's chaos and people are running around and as soon as those musicians are kind of leave in and they kind of come back one by one, it's like, wow, they are, they're committed to literally go down with the ship. Right. And so, uh, that really was an all in kind of outlook. And so the first action that we're talking about today, Amber, is that all in leaders make the decision to commit. And that's actually what you were talking about is as soon as you got done with that story is you had to make the decision to commit. We always talk about committing to the process and committing to excellence, but then we don't kind of really make that decision. And every leader needs to make the decision to commit. You see, a lot of people just never get started, Amber. They don't. And for those who are listening out there who are dealing with life in terms of perfection, I have news for you. It's never going to be that way. It's never going to be the right time. It's the stars are never going to align. And so actually uh, there's a guy named John Mason and he's not John Maxwell, right? John, John Mason. I, I have, I have a different guy that, that I'm, that I'm going to give you our first book recommendation today. And he's got a book called don't wait for your ship to come in, swim out to meet it. <laughs> and that's exactly what, what the book talks about. He says, your ship's not going to come in. It's, it's out there in the distance. You can see it most of the time. You just need to get out there and get on that ship. And it's there. It's waiting for you. You just have to take a little bit more effort. And so I would recommend all of our listeners to get that book today. And, and I recommend that you read it because, you know what? The conditions are never going to be perfect for you. They're not. And if you're a manager of your company, whether it's lower, middle, or upper management, you're never going to have exactly what you want. You're never going to have all the right people. You're never going to have all the right things. You're never going to have all the right uh, uh, gidgets, and gasm, uh, gidgets and gizmos to, to, to make everything happen. But 
I bet that you have at least enough to get started. And so if you, if you want to do it, you got to get started. You got to make the decision to commit. You see, leaders are the ones who get people on the bus. And that's what Jim Collins says in his book, Good to Great. And we talk about his book all the time, Amber. I think that was one of the first three books that we read, Good to Great. And I said, you got to read this book. You got to see what it takes a company to go from good to great. Because Amber, that's where you were with your, with your team. They were good. They were on the way to being great, but they were stuck and they were stuck because of you. And I, I don't say that to be mean because my <laughs> because my people, right, were, were stuck. And whenever your people are stuck, it's never because of their inadequacies. It's because of your inadequacies of a, uh, inadequacies of a leader. It's the things that you need to do to do differently. And so we need to help people foster commitment by getting them in the right seat, which is what Jim Collins says. He says, once you get them on the bus, that's good. But now you got to get them in the right seat. You got to get them doing the right thing because once you do that, you can succeed. And so here's a question for all of our listeners out there today. Do you foster a culture that helps people commit to the process that you have in mind? Because as the leader, you have to give them a reason to make that decision. And if you haven't had the, ha, had the, the, the wherewithal to make that decision yourself, then how can you ask your people to make the decision to commit? Because they're only going to go where you ask them to go. Every person that you and I lead is depending on our actions to commit to helping them succeed. And a lot of our listeners out there, a lot of people who are leading teams, whether it's, it's one, five, or over a hundred people, a lot of you think that you've made the decision to succeed, but I would bet you're probably really just kind of dancing around the subject. Well, how is it that somebody could think they've made the decision to succeed, but in actuality haven't? Can you work that out for me a little bit? Yeah, it, here's what I mean. Leaders are always the first ones to make the decision. They are. It, it, other people can kind of make littler decisions, but we as the leaders make the big decisions. Take Michael Jordan. Remember, I, I mentioned a, a few podcasts back a documentary called The Last Dance. And I'm telling you, if you haven't seen The Last Dance, you got to see that. That documentary just kind of spells out what leadership looks like. And, and, and I recommend it because... Leaders, when you watch that, you're going to see that people like Michael Jordan are really hard to come by because he made the decision first for himself and then he invited people to catch on to that decision to commitment. And then he put the entire team in the position to win. In fact, Michael Jordan once said, the heart is what separates the good from the great. Leaders, are you separating the good from the great? Because you need to give your decision to long-term success a lot of thought. You've got to give it enough thought. Have you given that decision enough thought? Because I would ask you today, leaders, if you, if, if you are not willing to do that, are you, will, are you really ready to put your team in, in, in a place where they can be successful? Because you need to do the things that are going to let you be able to do those things that make the entire team successful. Yeah. Are you really willing to do that? That sounds like one of those things that you would say, and you should journal about that. <laughs> so Mo, what is the second way that leaders can be all in? Yeah. The, the second thing that leaders need to do, the second action that leaders need to take to be an all in kind of leader is that they are action oriented. All in leaders are action oriented. There's no way that you're going to achieve your goals if you don't get moving. <laughs> so make the decision. And that's essentially getting the car from park to drive for those of us uh, who have ever driven stick shift. And if you don't know how to drive stick shift, uh, I would say it's exhilarating because once you get moving and you're moving those gears around, you have control, but you don't have control if you're just sitting in park, you can't go anywhere. The car's just sitting there. You have to actually start doing the things that are going to get you where you want to go. And I'll tell you this, leaders are the ones who want to take action and leaders are the ones who do take action. They take action first and they make sure that others see them take action. Because remember, your team is only going to do what you demonstrate to them. In fact, 
I was told once by one of my one, one of my uh, mentors, he said, you know what, Mo, your leaders are only going to do about 50% of what you do right, but they will do 100% of what you do wrong. And I thought, oh man, I've done a lot of wrong things. And you know what? My, my followers, the people that are looking to me, they always do the wrong things. They're, they're quick to do the wrong things. But if I do the right things long enough and they just do a little bit of those uh, uh, on the way, then I'm going to start to put them in a winning position. You know, Les Brown put it this way. To be successful, you have to be willing to do the things today that others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow that others aren't going to have. And let me tell you, that is so true. Les Brown knows and, 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 and is giving us that mandate saying, you are the one who has to do those things that others aren't going to do. That's why people are following you because you're doing the things that they would love to do themselves. They just aren't doing them for whatever reason. And they probably have good reasons. You have to give them a reason to do those things. And when you do things right, it helps them do those things. You know, this is often the secret ingredient that many leaders are, are missing. That is, if you can't seem to get moving in the right direction, you've got to figure out how to do it. And so the question is this, are you moving or are you staying still? Are you willing to do the things today that others won't so that you can have the things to, tomorrow that others are not going to have? And Amber, I mean, I'm talking about the success that, that leaders want. We, we all want our teams to be successful. And this was actually uh, the lifelong mantra of the great receiver, Jerry Rice, <laughs> he got up every morning and he renewed his decision to success. He didn't make the decision every morning. He renewed the decision to success. He made the decision once and then he acted on that decision every morning. He didn't have anybody telling him what to do or how to do it. He just took the initiative. And that's why he is one of the greatest receivers, if not the greatest receiver of all time. And Amber, I know that you have a soft spot for Jerry Rice because you are probably one of the biggest 49ers fan uh, around <laughs> and you've read his book, Go Long. Yeah, it, I loved that book. And actually, I bought it for my dad this year for his birthday oh, and he loved it yes. too. Yeah, because growing up, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig, they were like household names. I, I thought they were my brothers there for a while. Um, and I know you give me a hard time for being such a diehard fan, but what can I say? I'm committed. You are. And, and you know, Amber, t talk about the heyday of 49er football. You just gave me three names that just took me back to my childhood. <laughs> and I used to love yeah. watching 49er football. And it wasn't even that, that I was a 49er fan or anything. I, I just liked to see people succeed. And you just knew when Joe Montana got behind center and he had all those other guys that, that were in the backfield waiting for him, you just thought, they're going to win. And when you mentioned Joe Montana, I mean, everybody thinks leadership when they think of Joe Montana. Now, you should think of yeah. leadership when you think of a quarterback of a football team. But are all those, are all those people always leaders? <laughs> they should be, but they probably aren't doing as well as they should. Joe Montana, he was one of those leaders. He drove that team. He willed that team to success on many occasions. And in fact... People don't remember when Joe Montana beat the Mighty Bengals that they weren't even supposed to win. They weren't expected to win. But it was Joe Montana who had all these other people and he, he galvanized them. He put them together and he put them in the right direction. And when him and Rice got on the field together, it was magic. It was lights out. <laughs> It was. And yet another great example of what the best decade ever, the 80s, brought us. <laughs> That's right. The, Amber, I think everything just keeps going back to if, if you live by the 80s, you're going to do OK. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, well, can, and can I say this? Most people out there just need to stop talking, Amber, and they need to start doing you talk to me a lot about what it means to be successful out there. People come up to me all the time. They say, this is what I'm going to do to be successful. And this is what I have on my plate, Mo. And, 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 and here's the, everything's laid out. And, and I'm saying, well, you know what? I, I believe you. It looks good. In fact, I might steal some of your plan, but until you do it, I, I really can't, I really can't believe it. I want to see it to believe it. In fact, Ralph Waldo Emerson put it this way. 
Your actions speak so loudly, I, I cannot hear what you're saying. Your actions <laughs> speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you're saying. Isn't that great? Uh, isn't that great? I think I've heard that so much from you. It's one of those, if I had a dollar for every time you said that to me, <laughs> I, I think I could buy the 49er franchise. Which would be really cool. As, lo as long as I can get box seats, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Yeah, but it is so true that you're, we can say things all day long, but our actions really do speak so loudly that others can't hear what we're saying because they're watching what we're doing. And that is so important. So Mo, what is the third and final action that all in leaders take? Here's the third action for today. All in leaders offer success to their followers. You have to offer that success to your followers. I can tell you right now that you'll have no shortage of obstacles to succeed along the journey. There's going to be a time in your life, if there hasn't already been one, where you're, you're going to want to give up. And this is why leaders were made. Because leaders are the ones that take that moment and they put their commitment to success into motion. And they love the challenge. And this is gonna be the moment right here, or the moments, there's probably gonna be a lot of them over your lifetime, when you have to decide if you want to be all in. David McNally commented one time this. He said, commitment is the enemy of resistance, for it is the serious promise to press on, to get up no matter how many times you've been knocked down. And I'm reminded, Amber, of, again, we're, now we're going back to the 70s here, but the great movie, the first, ever Rocky. I mean, we're talking the original yes. here. And, and Rocky, it, it, at the end of this, he's going up against Apollo Creed and he's just totally getting pummeled, right? And, and there's absolutely <laughs> no reason that Rocky should get up, but he does. And in fact, my favorite part of that entire movie is the part where uh, Rocky gets goes down and it cuts away to his trainer and Mickey just, he says, just stay down, just stay down. Because even his <laughs> trainer knew, this is insanity, don't get up. But Rocky had the will to win. He got up and I won't give you the end of that movie. You've got to watch Rocky one. And then you've got to watch the rest of them. I think there's like 13 or 14 of them now <laughs> in, the, in, in the saga. But, but one of the soundtracks, Amber, that I used to listen to uh, when I used to do sports competitions when I was younger. And actually I still listen to this playlist today. I have to be totally uh, honest and, and let everybody know, like I just haven't grown out of that is um, it, it's, it's from the Rocky saga and you can find it on any of your favorite, you know, playlists or whatever, wherever you find your music sources or whatever. And there's one song though, in the Rocky uh, saga, and it's called gonna fly now. And everybody who's over the age of 40 knows that song. <laughs> it's the one that plays while Rocky's training. Right. And, and, and you can't, you can't yeah. listen to that song and not get fired up and want to get up one more time and continue on. Yeah. Oh gosh. I love the Rocky movies. And so last year when quarantine started, you know, March, 2020, when we all thought we were just going to have like a two week stay at home vacation, the one thing I wanted to do was watch those movies and watch them with my kids. So we had like a Rocky marathon and we watched all five of them and the two creeds, which I, you know, around Rocky five, it got a little tough, but we watched all seven of the movies. And there's, there's that point every time where it's like, he's full of, you know, fear and self doubt. And then they cut to that shot of like, you see it in his face, you see it in his eyes. And then the music starts and you like, you know, there's no way he's going to give up. Like he is going for it. And then before you know it, I'm standing up and I'm yelling at the TV and my family <laughs> telling me to sit down and be quiet. But you just get so so excited because I think that's, that's what we want inside of all of us. Well, and Amber, that's the kind of spirit that you need to foster in your team, right? And we always talk about that. You, you need to be the one that, that help to, to bring your team along with you on that, on that journey of success. And once you start achieving those things, others are going to be drawn to you. And, and, and I can't even explain it, but Amber, I know that you and I, in fact, just in our latest conversation, we talked about that and you're just, and you would tell me how people respond to the way that you 
you come alongside them. And you know, that is so great. I talk to so many leaders that make that little change and they start to bring their people alongside of them. And it just makes all the difference in the world. You have to have that kind of attitude where you, you will not, and you cannot be defeated ever or else, you know what, as a leader, now you're not just letting yourself down, you're letting the whole team down and probably the whole organization. If you're in a position of leadership at your company, and so you have to stay tough leaders. You have to move forward. It's at that point where you can move from being a demonstrator to actually putting your leadership gifts and abilities into practice. If commitment is the enemy of resistance, you need to be all in and investing and spending your time living in the commitment realm. Kevin talks to me all the time about realms and he would call this the commitment realm. You just want to stay there. You want to be around it. You want to feel it because that way you won't have to focus on the resistance because you're so focused on commitment that any of that resistance is just going to be pushed to the side. Okay. Talk to me a little bit more about that. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, okay. So let me put it this way. When I was learning how to ride a motorcycle many years ago, my instructor told me that when in doubt, just look where I want to go and the bike will inevitably start going that way. It's really weird, but it's true. In fact, he said, if you're ever going to be going and you're about to get in an accident or what we want to do is we want to steer away from the accident, but it's, it's completely different on a motorcycle. You have to lean in to where you want to go. It's so crazy. And, and the bike is going to follow you. And so if, if I was ever going to be in that kind of situation, I needed to know that beforehand. And so we need to start pushing to the place where we want to go, because when you push towards the things that, that are where you want to be, those obstacles, Amber, they're just going to, they're going to move to the side. And so the bottom line is this, if you want to go anywhere in life, you need to do two things. You have to be committed completely all in to what your goals and dreams are going to be. But after that starting point, like, like the illustrations that, that I just gave, you, you need to understand that the second part is you need to inspire others to, to let them know you're going to push towards those things and you're doing it not for yourself, but for them and for the team and for the company, because you are now showing them that they can achieve much bigger things if they follow you. What, what is that you always say to me? Uh, uh, if no one's following you, are you really leading or are you just taking a walk? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, Amber, there's a because lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there that are just taking a walk. Trust me. And, and I've been in those positions before where I thought I was leading and I wasn't. So leaders don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You do the yeah. hard things, push through and take people with you. Yeah. And so leaders, if you're out there asking yourself, am, am I really leading? Is anybody following me? Cause sometimes we, sometimes we all feel like we're just taking a walk, but I encourage you to really think about this and look at your commitment level. Have you made the decision to be all in and what is your commitment level demonstrating to those around you? So to recap, all in leaders make the decision to commit. All in leaders are action oriented and all in leaders offer success to their followers. So before we go today, Mo, any final thoughts for us? Yeah, just one. Leaders, just get out there and do it. Make the decision, be that all in kind of person and let people know that you believe in it. Because when you believe in what you're doing, Others are going to be drawn to you because they want to go somewhere. A lot of people don't even care where they're going to go. They just want to go somewhere. And that's why leaders, it's either wonderful or very dangerous, depending on what you, what you're doing and what you know. And so have that all in attitude, recalibrate today and think, what do I need to do to make that decision and help my leader, my, help my leaders, the people that are coming alongside of me, the people that are looking at me and how can I make all of us successful together? Because when you do that, you're going to start changing lives and it's really going to be incredible to see and people are, people are going to see it. Yeah, it really is incredible. Well, Mo, thank you so much. And thank you listeners for joining us again. We look forward to seeing you next time.